Hello and welcome to the show. Now, in this series of Hill Climb Monsters, Japanese cars have not been faring well at all. In fact, the highest placed one in this series is currently 18th, the Nissan 240SX. Admittedly, yes, the table is very, very close in this series. There isn't a huge amount of spread at all in terms of time, but yeah. 18th place, the highest Japanese car. So today we are going to try and change that. And what better vehicle to go for than a Mazda MX-5. Now, I've used the sort of first or second generation cars quite a lot. Very rarely, though, have I done much with the third generation. So that is what we are going to be, uh, to be using. Now, we start off at a relatively high C-Class, plenty of PI to work with, which is helpful. The big question is, what will the standard engine be able to do? The rules with this series, the car must keep its standard engine if it can get to the top of S1 class. I don't think the MX-5 can. I'm not sure that we're going to get enough power out of the vehicle standard engine to, to manage that. 245s at the front is nice, but I bet about the same 255s at the rear. Not massive tyres, but it is a relatively small light car, which at least is something. We are, of course, going to have the Forza Aero at the front and at the back. Uh, we will go, of course, get some race brakes, get the off-road suspension, and then have a look what to do with the weight reduction. Yeah, the MX-5 to start with, actually not quite as light as I was expecting it to be. <laughs> uh, I guess I put all the drive on it, so yeah, that, that's, that's probably, yeah, <laughs> my bad on that front. Uh, we can get it down to 2,400 pounds, actually not a huge amount of weight to come off the vehicle. There's not a huge amount you can do with weight reduction to these. Uh, there's not a huge amount of PI either. Um, okay, we're going we're gonna to come back to weight reduction. What I'm going to do is we're going to see what I can get out of this car's standard engine. If we can get it to top of S1 class, then of course we will use it. But I'm hazarding a guess that uh, it won't. Of course, it's not a particularly massive engine in this car. And while the Honda, the 2-litre Honda engine, can get up to some 700 horsepower, I'm having a sneaking suspicion that this one here will not be getting that much. With the turbos on, with the pistons in, I get I think the intercooler's probably not going to make any difference to the PI because it's going to add some weight as well. It's, yeah, overall, not a huge amount. Now, we will have a look. The weight reduction wasn't adding much PI anyway, so, yeah, I mean, it's um, that's a long way off. That's a long way off the top of the class. So we are going to have to swap the engine in the MX-5. Now, we do have... Some decent options with this car. In fact, we have four options. We can go for the turbo rally engine. We're not, because that's not going to get much more power than the standard engine, and we can only take off restrictors. A decent enough engine for, for some purposes, not for this. We can go for the 3.2 litre i6. We can, and I'm very tempted by the 6.2 litre V8. Oh, oh, we could put the quad rotor in it. No car has gone up with the quad rotor yet. I'm doing it. I, I think PI-wise, you might do... I don't know if you'll do better with the V8 or not. Um, the V8 is slightly heavier than the quad rotor. You'll probably get more torque out of the V8, but you might not get as much power. We're doing it. We are going. <laughs> the quad rotor. I, I, I wasn't expecting the PI to let me get the quad rotor in it. I was fully prepared to go for the, um, for the V8, but no, this is the way to do it. Oh, it's one PI. It's one PI to go now uh, admittedly ideally with the v8 as well you could get some weight reduction in it as well this has got no stages of weight reduction uh have we got anything that i can take out that's one i don't really have anything that can come out of the car that would give it the one pi that it's needing i, I don't want to take the roll cage out though because that's just gonna be well it's gonna be a wobbly mess it's the the chassis rigidity is always is always nice and i don't think i have any of these in the car Anyway, oh, that's annoying. That's really annoying, that one. Uh, do I have... Hmm. I don't really have much in the way of options on this one. That's, that's a real pain in the ass. Because, yeah, we can get that in, but we would have to lose something somewhere else. I don't want to take out... I don't want to go below racing brakes. We need off-road suspension. There is no leeway in that. Now, I know that these sometimes might make... Okay. If we take out the rear anti-roll bars. Now, it's not ideal, 
I wonder if... Okay, let's just try something. If we go for sports... Okay, we can go for sport front and rear anti-roll bars, and that will get us the one PI that I need. That works for me. That's not that, well, that, that, that works for me. I mean, it's, it's not the, the perfect solution. This is a, to fit that quad rotor in has been a little bit of a workaround. It is pretty decent in terms of power, 718 horsepower. Although power to weight ratio wise, it isn't the greatest we've ever seen. I do know the quad rotor does tend to be fairly savage in terms of its power delivery. But uh, for the sake of uh, the sake of argument, that's what we've gone with. It could be fast. The MX-5 could be fast. Likely to be scary. I don't know whether this is going to be the car to get the Japanese back into the top 10, uh, but it's certainly going to be spectacular either way. So, our brightly coloured rotary monster is here at the bottom of the Devil's Corners hill climb stage. I'm going to get three runs through this course to try and go as quickly as possible. The current leader, a BMW 507 with a 155.9. No idea if I can get near it. I'm not expecting this to quite challenge the very tippy top of the table. Although, to be the fastest Japanese car to beat that Nissan is a 158.5. Might well be doable. To get into the top 10, we need a 57.4. The Donkavort is down in 10th place now. Uh, it might be able to do a top 10. We will, uh, yeah, have to wait and see. It's all going to come down to just how good this car is through the corners and whether the power delivery is crazy or not. If we have a lot of oversteer problems, it'll be tough. If we don't, if we can make the most of the rotary power, then, yeah, we could be actually looking in quite good shape. I also love that uh, the... <laughs> With the uh, the revometer, it's basically maxed out almost the entire time when we're accelerating. It's just <laughs> when we change gear, it barely shifts off the top of the gauge. That's really quite cool. Uh, come on, MX-5. I know I've been a little bit silly. I just couldn't resist the allure of noisy, noisy rotary fun. It's, uh, yeah, so far I actually going pretty well. It does drive pretty damn nice. Straight line speed is also not bad, 117 miles an hour. Uh, we might be able to get away with a little bit uh, a little bit more speed down there. It's We can't get away with braking any later than that. It's whether we can get more speed out of the corner heading on to the straight. Actual, yeah, straight line speed is very, very good in this car. 105 miles an hour across the jump. And this is, you know, just on the opening run here with the MX-5. It will likely get better as I get more used to the car. Actually, very easy to drive. I'm... I'm impressed that I've I've got a little bit crazy in terms of in terms of engine and so on, and this is still working remarkably well up this course. As I said, the quad rotor has been notorious for making cars very oversteery and very uh, savage, quite frankly, in terms of their power delivery. And this isn't too bad at all out here on the snow. Yeah, sure, it's been converted to all-wheel drive and so on, but still, you can have oversteer in an all-wheel drive car, and it is. Uh, yeah, working very nicely indeed. I think I got a little bit scruffy towards the end of this uh, this run as we round the final corner. Run it sideways towards the line. That's not a bad opening run, though. What was that, 58.6? 58.652. So we are, well, I mean, we're only a fraction down on that A86 on its first run. That's, I think, promising. I think promising indeed for the MX-5. Now, if we want to crack that top 10, we need a second and a bit in the course of these next two runs. We need to find, yeah, around about a second. That sort of time is certainly doable if we don't go gallivanting off into turn one. Admittedly, there were no massive big mistakes on that previous run. I think just a little scruffy in places. So where are we going to find the speed? in this. Well, acceleration out of the corners is one place that we can always find a, a little bit of time, especially when you have got the acceleration like this car. No, it isn't up there with the fastest vehicles, and as I said, when I build it, that's perhaps not the most surprising thing. We've got perhaps 100 less horsepower than some cars, certainly half the torque of some vehicles that have gone very quickly up here, and while we are light, we aren't the lightest by any means. The BMW, the Volvo, and so on had more power with less weight. So, yeah, we're not topping the speed charts down here, but, I mean, that's 119 this time around. 120 miles an hour down that straight is respectable. It's not the fastest, no, we have seen in the region of 130 miles an hour, but this car is controlled through other parts of the circuit, so it can make up some of its time through these corners, and it is good through these turns as we leave 
the hairpin there. Up towards the next hairpin. Can we throw the car in to uh, this corner? Now, perhaps where we will struggle a little bit on some of these hills, we might not quite have the greatest of traction. Uh, not helped by the, uh, the smaller tyres here in the MX-5. Oh, we're a little bit out of shape. That was my bad in terms of car positioning at uh, the top of the course. Oh, and onto the icy straight we go. We we're actually across the ice there, but uh, we got away with it. Not got away leaving the icy straight though. Very, very wide. I don't know if I clipped the ice. I might clip the ice fractionally on turning there, or I might have just mispositioned it all completely and utterly on my own. I think that's cost us any chance of going quicker. We are, it is a nice car to drive through those final two corners. It really does get changed direction very, very well. 58.8, no better. No better at all on that run. Yeah, big, big mistake from me around. The, I was bad coming onto the icy straight, and we were terrible coming off of it, which won't have helped our time whatsoever. The rest of the run, though, I think fairly similar. Yeah, consistency, at least, is, uh, <laughs> is a good thing. So, we have got one final attempt with the noisy, noisy rotary power in this MX-5 to try and propel it somewhere up the leaderboard. It would be great to see a top 10 from it. I think that might be, might be asking a bit too much. I'm not really sure where I can find huge swathes of time, really, with this car. It is a good driving vehicle, do not get me wrong. The front end is actually turning in very nicely to these corners. The back end is actually behaving itself on the most part, so good balance in the MX-5. I think overall we might have... We might be struggling with simply not quite having the same grip as some of the faster cars. We don't quite have the same power to weight ratio. It's, while not heavy, it's also nowhere near the lightest car to have gone up this course and combine all of that. And I think overall, we uh, the, the, the rotary power is not quite making up enough. We've not quite got enough acceleration in the uh, MX-5 here. Get on the brakes a little bit earlier. We will get it nicely around the corner. Got to watch out for the uh, bumps on this stage. You know, we're in a road-going sports car. It is not surprising that it might have a few issues, although on the most part, the MX-5 hasn't been too bad. Certainly, there are cars that have had a worse time on the bumps. The icy straight really being the worst place for uh, cars to get caught out with bumps fling it into the hairpin. An absolutely fantastic car to drive up here. Regardless of what this uh, stage time might be, I am very much enjoying driving the Rotary MX-5 up this course. I just don't think it's going to really challenge the big guns. We are flat out, though, heading on to the icy straight. Across the bumps we go now. Let's try and get off the icy straight properly this time around. And it is nicely, nicely done indeed for the MX-5. 106 miles an hour across that jump is very, very good going. Now, you will tend to see me hugging the inside towards that penultimate corner. There is a horrible ice patch on the outside, which you really do not want to hit. And around the final turn, run towards the line. It is a little bit quicker. Not by a huge amount, though. Not by a huge amount. 158.185 from the MX-5. It does make it the fastest Japanese car, but it's not by very much. It goes up into 16th place, managing to beat the BMW 2002 Turbo, that C63 AMG that went out last time, as it does beat the 240SX, the Charger, the Toyota A86, but loses out to the Jaguar F-Type, the Land Rover Series 3, the Porsche 718. It's yeah, a fair bit down. I say a fair bit down, that's a little bit unfair. It is, what is it, where where have we got our times? It's about six tenths of a second down on the Donkavort, and that the is in tenth place. So that is just how, how close this table is. Six tenths of a second down on the, the Donkavort that would be required to get it into the top ten. A great fun car to drive, a great noise of course, and as I said, yeah, surprised to see the rotary engine and everything getting it into uh, into S1 class. Perhaps, yeah, not quite, we're not quite able to make up enough time through the corners, and while yes, there is a glorious screamy noise whenever we go to accelerate, it isn't epically, epically fast in a straight line when you're comparing it to some of the cars that have gone before, the likes of that BMW, the likes of the Volvo, the likes of the Pacer and so on, and... Yeah, it can't make up enough time in acceleration, or it can't make up enough time around the corners, put it together, and you end up with, well, yeah, a 58-1, essentially, <laughs> in terms of in terms of stage speed. I do, though, think it is a brilliant, brilliant car to drive, a lot of fun. And if we ignore the time for a second, it is perhaps one of the most entertaining cars that uh, has gone up this course. 
But yeah, no Japanese car uh, in the top 10. The MX-5 tried, but uh, just a little bit too slow. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.